At the ONS, we track the prices of a selection of goods and services to produce our inflation statistics. These statistics affect everything from government policy and pensions to council tax and even mobile phone contracts. However, prices can change quickly and often, so it's important that our statistics are as accurate and up-to-date as possible. That's why we're changing the way we collect grocery price data, by introducing scanner data. These data sets, from the sales of over a billion units of products every month, cover around 50% of the market. These scanner data will allow us to significantly increase the number of products we track and give greater insight into the products we use as part of our statistics. They're provided to us by supermarket retailers and don't contain any personal customer information. However, they do tell us about the total sales figures of the products that the retailers sell, both in stores and online. This also means we're using a new index method, the Gex Tornquist, which I'll describe in more detail later. It can be helpful to think of measuring inflation as measuring the change in the cost of a fixed basket of goods and services. This basket represents all the things we buy in a month and can be anything from food or clothes to transport, such as bus tickets and rail fares. It can also include a one-off purchase like a TV or a sofa. We measure these prices to determine the cost of the basket in one month and compare it to its cost in another month. This will show us how much prices have changed. However, to make this basket representative, each category needs to be carefully weighted. The basket we use covers a whole range of goods and services that people have bought. But to give you an example of what we mean, here's a much simpler basket that's made up of three parts food, one part transport, and one part clothing. These weights help us understand how much each category contributes to the overall cost of the basket. And these categories can be broken down further. Food can be divided into vegetables, fruit, meats, breads and cereals, and so on. Vegetables can be split into potatoes, fresh vegetables, frozen vegetables, and others. And then fresh vegetables can be divided even further into lettuce, cabbage, and broccoli. At each level, we use various data sources, such as surveys, to understand how much is being spent on each item, which gives them the weight in our basket. However, there comes a point where the components of the basket get very specific. For example, while our surveys can tell us how much people spend on cabbage compared to broccoli as a whole, they can't tell us how much people spend on different cabbage products. To cover this, we use methods that assume each of these different products has an equal weight, which is best practice when we lack data to calculate them directly. But scanner data will give us the information we need to directly calculate product level weights in the basket. To handle this scanner data, we use an index method called the Gex Tornquist. We use this method because it has several advantages. Firstly, this method is better at handling what's known as product churn. The products that supermarkets sell will go in and out of stock from time to time, and some products may be discontinued or new products will get launched. Most index methods are not designed to capture this product churn, but the Gex Tornquist can take these products into account. Product weights. Scanner data tells us exactly how much of each product has been sold. So unlike traditional methods, the Gex Tornquist uses product weights to make the products that consumers spend more on have a larger weight in the basket. By using product weights in each month, it also helps to avoid a concept known as representativity bias. Representativity bias occurs when the weight of each component in the basket depends on when the basket was filled. For example, if we compare a basket of goods and services between January and February, the weight of the products that are in there may be slightly different depending on whether we use the January or February weights. This might be because a branded product was discounted in January, but full price in February. So its weight might be higher in January, as more people bought it at a discounted price, but its weight might be lower in February, as people could be buying another discounted brand instead. This may result in two slightly different indices, depending on which basket is used. If the January weighted basket and the February weighted basket are considered equally valid, then a third basket that averages these two baskets may be preferred. The Gex Tornquist method approximates this third basket, which is considered free of representativity bias. These advantages make the Gex Tornquist method a robust and accurate way to measure inflation, especially when dealing with the ever-changing world of grocery products.
By improving how we measure inflation, we can get a clearer picture of how prices are changing and a more accurate indication of how these changes are affecting our everyday lives. We've written a more detailed explanation of how we use the Gex Torquist method on the ONS website. You'll find the link in the video description.